We're joined by Misty Maris, trial lawyer, legal analyst here, uh, News Nation now to talk about this. And I want to talk a little bit more, a big picture about Mr. Trump uh, on the legal side of things as well. Um, talk to us first about this bond that he posts and the finances behind how it worked and how he's going to cover these expenses. Yeah, absolutely, Connell. So this bond, he had actually gone to the judge uh, in the court regarding the E. Jean Carroll case and had asked the judge to put a stay on him moving forward with posting a bond or paying anything to E. Jean Carroll pending his appeal, which we know he's already filed a notice of appeal. We knew he was going to appeal that verdict. Now, the judge declined. The judge said there mm -hmm. would be no stay. So what happens is that instead of posting the entire amount, he goes and gets a bond, meaning he goes to financial institution, puts up a percentage of the money, and the remainder comes from that financial institution, and that's what constitutes right. this $91 million bond. We don't know how much he put up, personally, how much collateral, or we don't know any of that. No, the details of what actually the underlying agreement between him and the financial institution are not uh, disclosed. However, okay. it's usually something like 10 to 20 percent in general. OK, so 10, 20 percent of the 90 of the 91.6 million. OK, so that was today. I, I want to say I want to talk big picture. We always flash up the timeline of Donald Trump's legal problems. And there's a bunch, you know, the, the immunity challenge in the Supreme Court and and all the rest. Well, anyway, here it is. March 14th, uh, the judge going to hear motions on the classified documents case. She got the hush buddy trial. Supreme Court arguments on immunity. That's a big one, April 25th. The classified documents, we don't forget about that. Of course, ahead of the convention and then the, the Georgia case. So the immunity case is the big one because it leads into um, the January 6th charges. You're on the record. You were on with us last, whatever it was, last week. You said you don't think that trial is going to happen, right? That, that's where you still stand. I stand that I, I don't think it's going to happen before the election. Right, right, exactly. So. I don't think it's going to happen before the election. The immunity arguments are in late April. Mm -hmm. the, the court would have to do an expedited decision, which would mean late May. They don't have to do that expedited decision. It could come at the end of term in June or July. Because in that case, this is a civil er a war era statute for conspiracy to defraud the United States with a novel legal issue. There's a lot to be done before it actually gets to trial in the courtroom. Let me so put those really charges up. I feel like sometimes we don't talk about what the charges are that the former president, what he's actually accused of doing, uh, which is a big deal. And that, you know, to, that's why we are so focused on, will this happen before the election he wants to be president again? So it's four counts, these conspiracy charges, conspiracy to defraud the U.S., conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding, of course, the Congress, uh, obstruction uh, of an attempt to obstruct an official proceeding, conspiracy against rights. So these are conspiracy charges, which you say are more complicated, but the, the, uh, the nuts and bolts is serious stuff that they were, you know, having a congressional proceeding on the 6th of January 2021, um, and he was trying to obstruct it. So is the, there are a lot of evidence in this case. Uh, I'm sure you've read through the indictment and what have you. Oh, yes, I've read the indictment many, many times. Yeah. Well, look, it's a conspiracy case. It requires a meeting of the minds. There are six co-conspirators who are, who are not identified, but we got to know who they are uh, based on how they're described in the indictment. It requires a meeting of a mind to take an overt step in furtherance of, a, a, of doing something criminal. So it's very complicated on a conspiracy case to actually uh, prove that intent. Now, What's the hardest part said, for Jack Smith to prove then? So Trump was there speaking at the ellipse, but there was a lot of comments before January 6th. What, what's the part you think that's the most complicated? Right, so it's two pieces. One is trying to obstruct uh, the, the, the valid election. The other is trying to stand in the way of having that election actually be confirmed. That's broad, right? So all of these cases, the January 6th cases we've seen, have come under the same statute. Even the appellate division said, OK, those cases can move forward. But when it comes to Donald Trump, he wasn't actually boots on the ground there storming the Capitol. So there's going to be other legal issues relating to that conspiracy hmm. and the intent that's required to be proven when this case goes as to Donald Trump. And so that's the piece I'm speaking about. It's a different argument that there has to actually be intent. And Connell, he has to have known the election results were false right. and done all of this anyway. So that's going into his brain at that time. Right. And and well, the, a, a normal person, a but not a, not a lawyer, but a, just a regular person would look at it and say, well, of course he knew. We all knew uh, there was no reason to not know. But you're saying legally he could have an argument possibly that says, well, you know, I still thought I got robbed, even though every piece of evidence said he didn't. Right. I mean, I, mean, I think he's still saying that. Connell, he is. Truth be told. Right. I know. <laughs> but that doesn't mean forward. it's true so, is my point. 
Right. And, and you're absolutely right. And all of that would come into the courtroom. And that's going to be the evidence. And a jury actually makes those determinations of fact. And they make that determination about intent. So all of that is going to be relevant. But it's not an easy case, especially right. when you're talking about a co-conspirator uh, co is also hmm. being involved. That's probably why a lot of people like you think the documents case maybe is uh, quote unquote easier. Is that true or? I think the documents case is the worst case for Donald Trump personally. For Trump, that's what I mean, right. Correct, yeah, it's the worst case for Trump. And it's almost not the crime, it's the cover up. And what do I mean by that? Okay, so we know he had the records. There's an argument, 32 of the charges relate to the specific documents and whether or not those constitute classified documents. Well, then we take it a step further. There's obstruction, uh, there's the all of the evidence relating to the deletion of uh, surveillance footage mm -hmm. at the bequest of the boss, you know, moving boxes around, um, not being forthright with law enforcement when trying to collect these documents. All of those I call the cover-up. And I think those are the most problematic issues in that case for Donald Trump, because that's more objective. Uh, and right. then we see some very, very intense motions to dismiss on this particular case where he's raising issues relating to presidential immunity, whether or not the statute they're pursuing this case under Presidential Records Act even applies to the president, uh, as well as the usual argument that he's being unfairly targeted uh, for the purpose of political pressure. All right, well explained, Misty, as always. I thought spending a few minutes on the actual cases and charges of what he's accused of would be worthwhile. We spend a lot of time on process, uh, which is also important, and timelines. Thank you, Misty, as always. We'll talk Thank to you, you again Connell. soon.